Hello everyone, welcome to the Don't Dis Me My Ability panel discussion. And I'm really happy to see you all there. And so have your camera on. And if you need any, if you have any question, just raise your hands using the button raise hand. And I will, we will uh, answer your question as possible. So I am the introducer today of the Don't This My Ability. Accessibility used to be about hearing aids, accommodating wheelchairs and screen readers, but it's much more these days. From spelling topo properly, to being forced to write with your right hand, to being unable to hear people who insist on whispering. Even minor disabilities affect confidence. Many, however, put up with them rather than speak up about them. This session about how you can change that and how Toastmaster can help, this is the really good panel discussion today. And I have the privilege to introduce three presenters today. Caroline Pitt, our baby Toastmaster, as she was saying, <laughs> she joined Toastmaster in 2015. And why did she join Toastmaster? Because she was looking for an activity in her local area to do and to meet people. She enjoys the ability to be able to convey messages and speeches, but what she really enjoyed the most and what having fun too, participating in competitions. So she's really good. She did a speech, I really love it. Second presenter, Tony Sharp. She has been in Toastmasters for 20 years and she joined initially to be able to better formulate the speeches and presentation that she was doing at that time so that they were going to be of more interest and more value to the audience and she stayed because she just absolutely loves the friendships that are developed and Tony enjoys having new members coming into the club and just watching how much and how quickly they develop their confidence. Mike Diggins, uh, our third presenter, joined Toastmaster in 1998, 24 years ago. He just like, or just like, he likes encouraging those who are not quite sure to develop their confidence with whatever, whatever they are doing. But also the things that can affect confidence and they can be very small things. So why, to, why Mike enjoys the mo most in Toastmaster and what, why he enjoys the most? Mike likes seeing the light to come on to people, seeing someone who does an evaluation and the, how they prove they can actually got the idea of evaluating and throwing their pre prepared notes away and telling people what they have actually learned. So today, our three presenters will be, I will pin them, so they are pinned here. And if you have any questions, just use the raise right hand button and we will answer your questions. And now I would like to introduce and to welcome Caroline, Tony, and Mike. Your turn. Thank you, Agnes. There's accessibility. We're talking about not the recognized disabilities that, uh, uh, that Corinne has outlined for us in her keynote yesterday. What we're talking about is not something that affects your physical or mental state, but things that add up to affect your confidence. Now, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Partly as your district webmaster. 
and partly because it's a chance to work with two people who I consider to be my mentors in this respect. But I'm not on any registered disability list or anything like that. No. Why am I here? I'm here because of a course I went to in 2017 when I worked for Auckland Council about accessibility. And specifically, it was about screen readers. We sat down, we walked in the course and along came the tutor, sat down, faced us, introduced himself, asked us to introduce ourselves, which we did, and then said, I've got one request that's a bit unusual. Please don't ask me to give you, give you the floor by raising your hand because you have to remember, I can't see you. And that was the first indication we had that he was completely blind. And after that, it didn't matter. And that is where Toastmasters comes in. What it, wherever you are with that confidence, which we all join to get, it shouldn't matter how, what challenges you have. As I said, I'm not on any registered disability, but uh, I'm left-handed which means, you know, those chunky car keys that you have that automatically open? It takes me almost 10 minutes to get them on a key ring where it takes a right-handed person 10 seconds. I have selective hearing. I can't hear the letter T very well, so I go off on an angent in certain conversations. And people wonder why I do that, unless I explain in advance. And finally, I'm not getting any younger. And everything is slowly, slowly, slowly catching up with me. And all those things combine to sap my confidence. Hearing is something that I tend not to join in conversations sometimes. That's enough for me. That's why I'm here. Tony, why are you here? Thank you very much, Mike. Now, I'm here because I have a passion about making clubs and our societies more accessible to one and all. Now, Mike's alluded to some of the things that we already know are challenges for people within clubs, whether that be loss of sight, such as myself and Carolyn, whether it whether that be a loss of hearing that a lot of our members do have. But there are some other aspects that we would like to plant the seed in order for you to be able to further extend assistance to your club members that, that may actually have accessibility needs that you may not have thought about. Now, please know that this the list we're about to share is not conclusive, and I'm not putting it on the screen because I don't do visual crap. <laughs> and we will be opening the panel We'll be opening the floor for people to share their stories and what their accessibility challenges have after we sparked your interest and your thought patterns just a little bit more. So had you considered that having English as a second language is actually an accessibility challenge? People with other cultures need to realize and understand that you know, we're here to support them and what we can do to help them is, uh, is be there to mentor them and help them through. Some forms of religion can be considered accessibility challenges. And, and this could be as simple as some religions not, uh, not liking to shake hands when you're being welcomed up the podium to present a, a speech. So things like this we need to take into consideration. Now, I know COVID's done a few favours for us when it comes to handshaking and it's enabled us to develop other techniques, but we always need to make sure that we are not intruding on the comfort zone of the members in our clubs. Age could be determined as an accessibility challenge. So this particularly may relate to people who struggle with technology. And again, in the COVID environment, having to move to the Zoom format for a lot of meetings and hybrid meetings did create major challenges for a lot of our members. There's the obvious physical disabilities that create accessibility issues that we've already mentioned. Perhaps you could be in a wheelchair. Again, accessibility challenges. One of the key ones that I really 
like thinking about and focusing on with our members is breathing. Now, I had an experience with a member in my own home club, which is Topol, and she would get up the front and absolutely freeze. So I, I set up mentor sessions for her. She came around and I said to her, well, I asked her if she knew what was actually happening to her body when she froze, when she got up the front, and she said no. I said, your nerves, your anxiety take over and you, you actually forget to breathe, even though it's a natural response for your body because all these other senses are taking over you forgetting to breathe and I'm pleased to say she overcame that and by focusing on taking breaths she was able to get through her speeches but sometimes she did breathe a little bit too much and tend to almost hyperventilate which made for another scenario that that needed to be addressed Perhaps you have members in your clubs who have memory challenges, people maybe who have dyslexia, Asperger's, things from the autism spectrum, the neuro neuro neurological type, uh, type challenges that we as uh, we as clubs and members need to be aware of because they're not something that is seen. It's about us making sure that we're accommodating each and every member and being able to do that in a, in a fully succinct and supportive way is key to the success of our clubs and to the growth of our membership. I'll now hand the floor over to Carolyn. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you. Now, while Tony's gone through quite an extensive list of challenges that people can face within clubs, it can also be as simple as the fear of getting up in front of people and then having to deliver a speech or speak. What we're wanting to focus on and to encourage you all to is to have the conversations. If you have a barrier that is preventing you from participating fully in your club, talk to your mentor, talk to other club members. That's what we are all here in Toastmasters for, is to support each other and to work with each other to make it easier. The reason I joined Toastmasters is it is an organization where primarily I was able to participate. Most things were accessible. Yes, there are some barriers within the current education program, but they are not barriers that cannot be overcome with discussions and and conversations. So it's really important to have those conversations. And then remember, most importantly, the barriers that you have or the challenges that you have, you can turn those into wonderful speeches and presentations and share yourself with your club and with your wider Toastmasters community. I well remember doing one evening a speech about my love of books. And I had my club completely puzzled when I talked about the feel of a book in my hand and the smell of a book and the turning of the pages. And they're thinking, what's this blind woman talking about? But then I pointed out at the end, books are not just simply print things. They are in Braille. And they're also in audio as well. So you can actually tell your stories and talk about your things by using your challenges in, in a way to convey that story to people. Thank you, Carolyn. Yes, and those of you who heard Matt's keynote just a few minutes ago, are probably thinking that comes right to the essence of what he was talking about when he was talking about service to the member. And those of you who heard Corin's keynote yesterday, uh, 
might have, might be thinking, well, she distanced the disability issues, which she couldn't do anything about. You can't. You you can only try and fix what uh, um, uh, pros using prosthetics for for, her, for a situation like that. But she also talked about quite separately the way that not being able to do something affected her confidence. And that's where we can help as Toastmasters. I'm gonna to bring Jonathan in, in here because Jonathan, uh, when he was speaking, he, he, it was a, he's been at both workshops. And when he was speaking yesterday, he reminded me about um, uh, Brett Rutledge's impersonation of Daleks who had absolute universal dom domination until they came to a flight of stairs. Jonathan. You want me to re 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 retell the uh, steer, steer challenges, Mike? <laughs> well, Mike and I both both belong to Silver Service, which is a club that goes out to dinner what, 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 one, once a month. And the challenges I come up with is when we come up, go to a restaurant which is on a second level without a lift. Now, obviously that entails somebody grabbing my the handles at the back and someone grabbing the, the front of the chair and, and li lifting me up and I and I hold on for, for, for grim for grim death and and hope that I make make the top, which I have on, which I have succeeded in doing so far. But I think the real challenge, no, not the challenge, but the accessibility issue here, not so much the lifting up, having been lifted up to the second floor or to the level of the, of the restaurant. It's being mindful of they, how that, how that person feels about being assisted in that way. I mean, speaking for my, my personal view is I don't mind. Someone can just grab the front, grab the back. It's happened all my life. People were, uh, fellow students at my high school were lifting me upstairs um, to, to classes all, all, the, all the time, not, not a problem. But other people, for whatever reason, and for valid reasons, aren't comfortable with that. So. I think it's important that that you ask them, are you comfortable with us helping you or how best how best uh, can you be assisted? And I think on the accessibility issues generally, it's make, doing that ask, how can we help? Not not assuming. Back to you, Mike. Thank you, Jonathan. Yes, well, we haven't dropped you yet, <laughs> but I think there are a couple of places that we won't be going to in the future. <laughs> yeah, I think we are. But Jonathan's absolutely right, as uh, uh, as he said. It, if you you may you may or may not have an objection, we don't know unless we find a way to help you tell us. And this is this has come through. It's come through in competition entries. I'm going to bring our district director in right now because he's got an urgent. Stephen, uh, <laughs> I look. I, I'm just a toastmaster in the situation. First of all, I am so pleased I've joined this group because I thought I knew a reasonable about a amount about disability, but in the short space of listening to Tony and Carolyn, is it Carolyn? Yes, and uh, Mike and Jonathan, I realise how ignorant I am, the starters. And I just want to go through the three things. First of all, it's an awareness thing, which Jonathan just touched on. I had no idea. And it, it, it's a case of if you don't know, and sometimes you don't see a disability, which is what Tony was alluding to. And I've written down here, English as a second language, I would never, ever, ever have thought of that as being a disability. So Tony, Thank you for raising that, because one of the things I say to a lot of Asian people that are members of our, our organization, please never start off by saying English is my second language. Embrace your language, use some of your language to enhance your speech and your presentation, then tell us what you told us. Rather than 
going on the defensive, go on the front foot. So, Tony, thank you for that. And obviously the one that we, I, I was totally oblivious to is the blindness of, not the blindness, sorry about that, but the unaware of some of the psychological disabilities that, that, that are there and taking them for granted. And Jonathan, you touched on also the awkwardness. I think that's why a lot of people hold off, hold off or hold back is because they feel awkward. And I was one of those. And, and fortunately, I've been in contact many, 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 many times with Tony and obviously with Jonathan. So my awkwardness is now abated and I'm feeling a lot more comfortable. So I'm very happy to, to help out anyone with a disability and again, as I said to the, the team, I'm pleased that you've now opened my eyes. I've got more of a peripheral vision as to what other disabilities there are out there. Back to you, Mike. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, by the way, if, to raise and lower your hand, as uh, Carolyn taught me yesterday, uh, or why is the shortcut for that? Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> so I, I raised my hand. <laughs> Agnes. Okay, yeah, so it's uh, what was saying Stephen about uh, the English, my second language. So why did I jump to Smaster? It's because of that. Um, when I came here in New Zealand, I couldn't understand what uh, New Zealanders was talking about because they were talking too fast. Second, I learned English at school, but in France, uh, yeah, we are not really good in learning English. <laughs> so um, I learned English more in the US. I went in 1996 in the US. I don't know how I, I passed the custom. I was almost, they, they thought I was a terrorist, so I don't know what happened, but I couldn't understand them. They couldn't understand me. <laughs> it was terrible. But so when when I came here to 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 work for for, for what I'm doing as a volcanologist, um, I could see that they couldn't understand me really well, and uh, I had problem to also explain my ideas. So I, I my confidence went really down. And so a few years ago in 2017, I said, okay, I have to join Toastmaster because I heard that it's great to talk, to have more confidence. And it was because I wanted to pronounce better English. And, and I came and I was really happy to, to join Toastmaster because Tony was there and to, I, was, I am at Topo Club. And uh, they were all really, uh, um, first, of course, they were quite uh, puzzled what I was saying. And, <laughs> but after the years, I learned a lot how to, to it's not necessarily to, um, about uh, pronouncing or it just to practice and take your time for myself. No, slowing down, think about slowing down and just uh, and just say what you want to say. And step by step, my confidence came back and I feel much better. I can now talk to medias and they can understand me. So it's amazing. And I'm really happy about that. And thanks to Toastmaster. And yes, second language is also a, a disability. So that's why it's important to, to talk even about that because it's a, yeah, it's a problem. Thank you, Agnes. So one of the key things that we, we need to focus on is that we assume nothing. We need to make sure we're communicating and we're talking efficiently and effectively with our members just to make sure that we are meeting what their needs and their expectations are. And we have, as clubs, we have responsibility to do that. However, that responsibility also moves itself over to the members because we don't know what we don't know. And if people don't have the ability or the confidence to, to be able to speak up and say, hey, I need a little more help with this or that, then there's nothing that we can do about it. And what's a key way that we can do that? The key way is mentoring. In Topol Club, we're fortunate that we have the most organized mentor coordinator for members, I, I would believe, anywhere in district. And this individual, Eric is his name, 
he has a Constantina file made up all of past, um, he has a copy of all of the past manuals. He has copies of all articles that have come through on Toastmaster magazines. And he's got everything organized and segmented so that when members are given an evaluation and encouragements or recommendations are made, he will go to that file, he'll get out the relevant document, he will hand it to the mentor of the speaker, and then so by so, so supplying them with the tools to be able to help that mentee or protege to be able to improve themselves better in the future. Now, our Eric also, as soon as a new member is joined, he touches base with that member. He asks them, you know, is there anyone in the club that you feel a particular connection with? Is there anyone in the club who you think you would like to have as your mentor? And he does this in a fair and just way by enabling those protégés or new members New, new members to have the ability to make a choice, but he's also very fair about not overloading specific members in order that everybody has the opportunity to not only be a mentor, but also or to be a mentee, but also to be a mentor. And therefore, again, expanding that whole leadership, uh, the skill set. So we need to really focus and encourage our clubs even more to make sure that mentor-mentee relationships are taking place because it's the proactivity and those connections that are really what's helping us to, to survive and to keep growing. And I know our district director, Stephen, several times has said to me, what does Topo Club do that innate that encourages new members and enables us to stay with a with a decent membership and my feeling is that this is part of the whole mentoring setup that we have as part of the success that the Topol Club has so now I see Merle, Merle just put a comment in the chat field and because I was speaking I didn't hear it but we'd like to get ideas from you as our as the attendees to this workshop and to see, are there other accessibility needs, needs that you either personally have or are there other accessibility needs that you see members in your clubs may potentially have? And we're about opening for discussion before we go on with any more chatting. Uh, Kingi wanted to say something. Welcome, Kingi. Maybe muted, can you? Oh, no? Can you hear me? Yes. That's oh. <coughs> Okay, you can hear me. Well, that's cool. Well, we've killed a Tony called Kingy Tene. Um, killed everybody. Uh, just a couple of things. I think uh, when I when I when I joined, uh, just like you, Stephen, when we we're talking about uh, not just our ability, the accessible accessibility, uh, I I had a particular perceived a perceived uh, uh, idea of what it would be. And then, of course, Tony, uh, you and your team have just blown that out of the water. I think there are two things that I'd like to contribute. And the first thing happened in 2011 when I gave my first, when I spoke at my very first district final. Uh, I, I was lucky enough because it was really, really hard to have won that contest. And when the first thing that I saw when I got into the, into the Waipuna room was the name of the of the of the actual conference was called something like uh, Te Rau Katupu, something like that Iroto te reo. and then it made me feel at quite at home because um, I know that there are many places that I that I do go to that I don't feel at home or I don't feel welcome and then I think that was part of the uh, that was part of that whole journey that was part of that whole journey that um, helped me I believe win that contest because I felt there was a space for myself and my culture. So I think there's, um, and I'm not just talking about um, the, the, the Maori culture, but I think in all cultures, uh, I, 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 I think that there's a, um, the accessibility of way to, <laughs> I think I'll call it the accessibility of that spiritual space so people can feel not just as people, but as their, as their culture. 
that 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 there's accessibility there too. Uh, I, I don't know how we can do that. Uh, and, and of course, the second my second part is, is that I actually suffer from a social anxiety disorder, uh, and and that's around uh, 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 that, that that that's around a need to be accepted. So uh, as you've seen, I think I've, uh, I've, this is the first time that I've turned on the turned on my video, uh, and, and again, that's all part of my social anxiety disorder. It's weird that people like me who have no problem standing and speaking and sharing, but when we're off the off the stage, we have problems talking. We have problems talking in that space. So I think when uh, so how does that how does that affect me? Usually, probably about an hour before my before my before my uh, uh, club meeting, I'll I'll get in a panic attack. I'll have a panic attack of of, of which which is probably like oh they probably want me, want me to come in or. I just feel really, really, really nervous. So, uh, so I just wanted, I, I don't know what the answers are there, uh, eh, Tony, but I just really wanted to put that out there and uh, also in the need to uh, uh, to really allow and give expression to my own vulnerability. And, and it's the power of me come out. That, that, it's more a contribution, eh, Tatoma. It's more of a contribution to us all. But one that um, that I, that you open the door to, and um, let's hope it stays open. Kia ora, <laughs> kia ora, tata. Atahua, atahua, Kingi, that's awesome. I think Kingi has put his uh, put a finger on, on it that no one knows the answers. That's what this session is all about. It's it's not about finding the answers. It's about the, have, finding the confidence to ask the, ask the questions. And Serena's got some confidence because she's got a question. <laughs> Probably a reminder. No, no, it's 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 all good. Where it, um, I do need to change the green light, but I had my hand up and I was I was busy thinking about that. Um, so we're after the thirty minutes. No, the, uh, my comment was that. Um, the, the little gaps between your actual meeting are really important too. The, you know, the 10 minutes before you start, during the break, and the after the meeting are really important for connection with your, your club members so you can get to know what they're like. Um, for those ones of us that actually need time to settle in the room, like Kingy and myself, you know, we might actually want some space. But when I get into my zone then I'm actually better at, at, at talking to people and finding out a bit more about them and then that helps their comfort levels more than mine. <laughs> Thank you Serena you've just explained why quite often in training a discussion can take 15 minutes to get going. Thank you I didn't understand that and maybe I need to have some sort of social anxiety and uh, particularly online. <laughs> Uh, right. Um, did you have another comment? No. All right. The, the floor is yours, folks. Just don't feel free to un to unmute. Otherwise, we'll have to say something. Christopher. Oh. You are muted, sir. That's it. Thank you, Mike, facilitator. It's taken me a while to sum up the courage to even speak, but thank you everybody for your presentations. I've prepared something in writing and I think it will help me to say what I need to say. I've got here, don't dismiss my ability. However, I'm dyslexic and some, of, some people even present might know this. Reading, writing, and is writing is very problematic for me, and I have a problem with short-term memory. This is also very hard for me. It's a phonological difficulty, which is at the root of my literacy problem. My short-term visual memory, memory storage, and memory speed, and recall from my storage is very weak. I can retain information more efficiently if presented to me auditorily. I can listen and I've been listening to you all 
in this presentation, I can absorb, but the recall I have is very hard and problematic. My verbal skills, as Toastmasters will know, is very satisfactory. But my listening ability is, and my listening ability is satisfactory. My reading ability is slow due to visual sequencing of words. And this comes back to my short term memory and storage is weak and recall. Now I've got at the end here for me, listening to a speech in Toastmasters and writing notes is nearly impossible. Mm. And then to be called upon to give an evaluation in a short time frame might only be 10 minutes is virtually impossible. Mm. Because I haven't got these two important factors to listen and at the same time write notes. I can listen, but if I change my vision to writing notes, I stop hearing what I'm meant to be listening to. The regurgitating is the word I like to use, what I have heard, due to short-term memory blockage. Uh, yeah, I, I, somebody talked about frustration yesterday. I'd love to be able to listen to a speech and then to immediately give a great evaluation because I have proven I can write very good speeches. In fact, one day you might even see me in speech contests. Wow, thank oh, you. I, I do wonder, yes, yeah, sorry. I do no, wonder no. if a group like this, because you've gathered from all over New Zealand, is it possible, perhaps, I don't know, three times a year, a group like this could get together and we could share how we start to cope with our difficulties. Over to you, facilitator. Well, thank you so very, very much for sharing, Christopher. And one of the hardest things for people is to feel that they are in a safe enough environment to actually be able to share and to speak from the heart as you have done for us here this morning. I congratulate you on your efforts and for sharing as well what the, what the challenges are that you have. And I'm inspired that you are suggesting that we set up some form of workshop that can actually work with and assist people who may have accessibility needs. And I think that's potentially something that, that we could actually consider and have further discussions about. So thank you very much. Does anyone else have a story they would like to uh, share, please? Christine? I believe, uh, Christine, I don't want to cut across you, but I believe Brian's had a, um, a oh. virtual hand up for, for, for some time. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to share some of um, Christopher's thoughts about um, doing an evaluation with a short time frame. And, but I would, I would think my disability is um, speaking, not using notes. Often, often a recommendation is to avoid using notes, but I, I go to a great deal of time to get my words how I want to say them. And that's how I deliver my speeches. And I guess it's probably a lack of courage to uh, avoid just reading from the notes. It's sort of a bit like a news reader. That's how I would consider my um, speech making. So back to you. Caroline? Christine. Yeah. Oh, I'll speak very quickly. Uh, I'm partially, I'm sighted, but once I don't wear my contact lenses, I virtually don't see anything. So I always sit near the front of the room so I can see, but I also want to make sure to remember that next week, this week coming 9th to the 15th is NZ sign. And I was asked at work to put together a basic video. So I did a basic sign video for work. And we forget that we've got these sight, I mean, hearing impaired people, and I had one in one of my, one of my clubs, 
that if too many people were talking at once, she couldn't hear, but if one person could talk at a time, as long as everyone spoke slowly and clearly, she could hear. So we've got to also think about the hearing people as well, because New Zealanders, and I am speaking quite slowly here for the people, because not most people know me, I can speak like a bullet train when I speak, so I'm trying to speak as slowly as possible here for everyone today. So that's it, but I mean, I've, I've dealt with Kylie and Kat as well, if people know them and Toastmasters. And Kat is partially sighted, but she can't see the depth of steps when we go up and down stairs. So you've just got to remember, and if I take my lenses out and I go to the swimming pools, I can't always see the steps either. So I can relate to everyone there, but I'm keeping it short and sweet, and I'll get the facilitator, Carolyn, to carry on speaking. Thank you. I, I just wanted to respond to the speaker with regards to needing notes. Um, I can recall a few years ago for International Women's Day, two of my club members took a very brave step and came and presented speeches in complete darkness at the Dunanois Dining in the Dark mm -hmm. restaurant that was operating then. Um, some Toastmasters have been there, and if you have, you will know what I'm meaning. It is complete and utter total blackout. Now, there is no way that you could use notes in that environment. I would be an advantage. I could, because I could read the Braille. Uh, one of our club members didn't realise this, and I didn't realize that she always used notes for her speeches. So when she arrived, here she had a little torch all set to read her notes. And I said, you can't have the torch in the dark room. So she had to deliver her speech from behind a curtain so that she could use her torch and read her notes um, rather than actually delivering it in the main room. So there was someone facing a challenge that they never thought they would have to face. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Yeah, empathy is wonderful. <laughs> I was just thinking while, while Brian was speaking there that really the when you're trying to incorporate something like that as an just as an example, the challenge is not to reduce your use on notes, but to make the notes part of the audience. So they don't, so using notes and continually looking down doesn't reduce the effectiveness of your speech. If you can do that, then you by all means use as many notes as you like. Tony. Yes. So how are we doing for time? I thought we had 15 minutes about 10 minutes ago. Yeah, we got 12 well, minutes left. I'm sorry, what was that, Serena? You've got three minutes left. Three minutes, right, thank you. Okay, so we best do our summaries, I think. So key points to take away. Set up mentors, assume nothing. Make sure that your members feel comfortable in your clubs, that they are able to fully express themselves in that safe environment, the safe haven that we have for them. Not all disabilities can be seen, so be aware of that. And at the end of the day, our clubs will be successful and we're going to assist, inspire and really help to motivate so many other people to come within our fold. Carolyn. As, in, as individuals, also remember your club is there and willing to support you. So don't be afraid to indicate if you have a barrier or a challenge that you need help with. Give your club membership the opportunity to assist and help you. Thank you, Carolyn. I would uh, uh, underline that. And also make sure that your, that your mentors aren't working in isolation. I think this is what puts a lot of people off. I mean, everybody joins Toastmasters, and it's just my opinion, because there is some sort of confidence issue. And you'll see on our the front, <coughs> front and centre of our, of our website, you'll see we sell confidence. And anything that affects that confidence or is likely to affect that confidence needs to be brought out. 
uh, talked out, acted out, doesn't matter how you do it, but it needs to, uh, it, it needs to come out in the light so it can be examined and see whether it's something that we can really do something about or whether it's a fog that we need to clear. And, oh, Troy's given us some more time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> another five minutes uh, so we, we, we will have time for some for some closing comments and then a, a further summary but I think the key thing here is that it comes into your vice president of education or whoever is managing the mentoring program the idea of a workshop district wide comes under our program quality director I'd suggest and uh, I don't know whether Stephen's still here. I can't see him on screen, but may maybe he'd like to poke our program quality director and see if uh, see if there's any response. Uh, right, any final comments from from anybody, particularly someone who hasn't spoken before, because I think sometimes you do have to give yourself a little push, and no one else can do that for you. Mike, can I just answer to your request there? Yes, I, I've actually taken very much by this session. And I thank everyone for participating, the facilitators for opening my eyes and my mind to what, what's in front of us. And I didn't even see it or, or know of it to the, the degree it is. Uh, I will pass on the encouragement. I like the idea of further workshops. Uh, Christopher, excellent idea. And I think, because uh, as, as you all know, my, my motto this year has been members first each of you are members and if you've got something that you need to have to enhance your experience in Toastmasters and it's just going to take a, a few people to coordinate it let's do it guys it's it's brilliant so Christopher thank you very very much for passing on that suggestion as well and Mike I will definitely be conveying the what I've experienced here in this particular workshop to the incoming team as I'll be on the outside perch but I'll still be looking in because uh, I think it's a very very good idea Thank you, Mike. Your job's to mentor them anyway, Stephen. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> Which means finding out any, uh, any accessibility issues in the current team. Uh, could, I, that, that could, I, could, I, could I just introduce um, some two, two thoughts, the power of vulnerability and the wisdom of insecurity. This is what is coming out of this uh, workshop. Uh, if you ask me, and it's very moving um, hearing people express their, their vulnerability and insecurities, if you like. I think there's a fixation with strength um, in the world at the moment with leaders and things, which is, which is a big mistake in getting us into a lot of trouble. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. You and you and Christopher have, been, have just exhibited superb leadership, and you didn't even know where you're doing it. You never know where it's coming from. Tony. Thank you, Mike. Sorry, there's someone else about to speak. I have a cheat, Tony. No. Okay, that's all right. And I thought someone was about to speak, so <clears throat> it's. Again, our clubs are safe and we want our clubs to be safe. We don't want our members coming in to think that we're judgmental. We want them to know that they are valued, they are important. And, and whilst, whilst we're not here ultimately as, a, um, as an organisation that, that openly supports, encourages, and has a sole membership of just people that have accessibility needs. I think the ability to be able to recognize these accessibility needs and to work with them is going to really further enhance our, our ability to make all of our communities far better places to live in and give those people the confidence that they may never have had before in the past. So let, let's bring it on, I say, team, bring it on. Thank you, Tony. And I'd like to give a shout out to a group in the States called uh, the uh, Abilities Mission. And they, uh, they provided the, uh, the background that I'm using. Uh, that's their motto. 
and the courtesy of that it's a religious group that's non-denominational and uh, is has the mission of improving accessibility for everybody now our scheduled time is up so i think it's about time i uh, called on agnes to close this workshop session thank you all for being here and thank you all particularly for listening thank you everyone it was great to have it was beneficial for everyone and i hope you enjoyed yeah this morning and thank you for the three facilitator today really really helpful thank you so now we can leave the room and come back for the next session and break See you soon there.